Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. This week we're going to be talking about voicing and how it relates to multiphonics and also how it relates to your actual standard clarinet playing. So what is, what is voicing? Voicing is our control over our tongue, uh, our tongue position and whatnot. Most of the time uh, when we're studying clarinet, especially at the beginning, we're told to have our tongue in the E position. It keeps our tongue high inside our mouth and it makes a good sound. So that's just the very tip of the iceberg in terms of dealing with voicing. Uh, voicing can be used to control a lot of aspects of clarinet playing, not just the tone quality. It can also affect pitch and controls register. So controlling register, a common example is when we're playing in the altissimo. E and A share the same fingering when we're playing in the altissimo. And how we control that, how we control which note comes out of the clarinet is by using our voicing. Okay, so that's all done with my tongue. Now some people like to say bite harder or loosen up on your lips or do whatever with embouchure, but that creates a little bit of inconsistency with the tone quality and the sound throughout the other registers of the clarinet. So voicing is what we use to control the partials of the clarinet and control which sound comes, which note comes out. So we're not playing a clarinet roulette with the notes. Okay. So for me, the tongue is separated more or less into three important parts. Uh, the tip of the tongue, is responsible for articulation. Uh, the tip doesn't affect pitch and register regardless of how much you're moving just the tip part. Okay, so the tip is just responsible for articulation. A lot of time we a lot of times when we, need, when we hear beginner students start to articulate, there's a lot of scooping. That means too much of the tongue is moving and therefore parts controlling pitch is also moving when they're articulating. That's why we're getting the scoop. Now on that note, the middle part of the tongue is responsible for pitch change. Uh, so a lot of Pitch bending, scooping is done with this part of the tongue. Okay, so that was all done without fingering change. I'm not sure if you can see that on the video, but that was all done using the high C fingering. And all I'm moving is the middle part of my tongue. Uh, here it is one more time. So the register didn't change and obviously there was no articulation going on so the tip of the tongue wasn't moving as much or it wasn't moving enough so that it's coming into contact with the reed. Now, uh, what, what I was doing with, with the middle part of the tongue is just raising it and lowering it. So that controls pitch. Now we have the back of the tongue which controls register. So like we said last week, the clarinet has multiple registers that it can play in. Uh, which one it's playing in depends on our voicing control. Okay, so you see there, um, some registers are a little more difficult than others. Um, so that was all done with the low E fingering. To get the middle B is a little bit hard. We'll discuss that a little bit later in the video. But to do the rest from G, C, E, G, 
B flat and even up to C, D, and E is all done with the back of my tongue. Um, if you go to my video on that that's pinned to my channel, the kind of the welcome video, I guess you would say, you can see a little bit um, of, I, I, I use ultrasound to look at my tongue motion in that video and you can kind of see how the tongue moves in order to get those uh, different partials. Now here I'm gonna use the pink trombone. I think many of us are familiar with that. Uh, so here's the pink trombone. Basically, here is the E position we're used to. Uh, in order to get the various registers out, I'm moving this part of my tongue. With the exception that you can't quite see in this uh, diagram is that this part of the tongue it, it is still it's always so when we say E and, and play with that E position we can feel the back of our tongue touching our top molars so that doesn't matter how I move the back of my tongue most of the time with a couple exceptions most of the time I can still feel the top the top teeth uh, the top molars with the back of my tongue so even though I'm moving the back part of my tongue, that top part there does not change. Uh, it's difficult to show it in this diagram. But yes, uh, that's how we control register. Now, how do we actually do it? What kind of sensation is it? It's a little more difficult. Uh, so for me, when I tell people to do the low E and change registers, I, I like to exaggerate the motion first and then rein it back in. So when the motion is ex exaggerated, it involves a little bit of uh, embouchure movement. Okay. So without the clarinet, from low E is when you do that and kind of move your embouchure and stretch your lips, it kind of puts your tongue in more or less the right place. So you can do that a couple times without the instrument, kind of get a feeling for what it feels like in your mouth, uh, what your tongue feels like in your mouth, and then translate that onto the clarinet. So when you're moving your lips that much, it's a little more difficult to be accurate, um, but you can still control the various registers uh, make it go higher make it go lower you might not hit the right partial that you want but uh, that's base the basic idea of how to control it and then eventually we're going to rein that motion in as, uh, in our in our embouchure but not in our tongue <laughs> like I said the B is a little bit difficult so um, to get the B, um, what we have to do is kind of s squish both the back and the middle of our tongue upwards towards the hard palate. So going back to the pink trombone, this part um, would normally be what I consider to be controlling the pitch, but because when we're playing things in that register from B to about E or F or maybe F sharp even G sometimes the instrument is um, the instrument is less susceptible to pitch change based on tongue motion N not to say that it's impossible we'll, we'll deal with that later but so you can move a little bit of the middle part of your tongue without affecting pitch so to get the B to speak I what I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing my tongue up like this and making this kind of a contour so follow the mouse rather than the actual picture um, so my tongue is kind of like making an arc that is kind of following the contour of my hard palate and my soft palate in order to get that B to speak so that is one of the difficult 
parts about the the one of the more difficult parts about voicing is to get get that middle register, uh, lower clarion register to speak. So uh, another way to practice is play the low E and then add. So basically play a middle B and then because you have the register key already open, it'll be a little bit easier to control the other registers. Uh, eventually, we want to be able to do that without the register key, but at first, if you add the register key, it's a little bit easier. So, going backwards, going back to pitch control, now remember how I said pitch and register are kind of controlled by different parts of the tongue which means I can change register and also change the pitch so I can bend the pitch regardless of which register I'm in without changing the register so basically uh. So with each register, I'm able to also control pitch because they are kind of controlled by different parts of the tongue. So that's one aspect of voicing control we want to be able to develop is controlling the different parts of our tongue. Um, some of you may already be able to do it. You just don't know what is happening. So that's a good start. Others, uh, it, it may take a little while to figure out and get used to because it's very different from traditional clarinet playing and what we're taught. Uh, for in terms of learning to control your tongue, I um I do have this voicing exercise that I use. Here it is on the screen. Um, it's also going to be available through my website. Link down below. So this is kind of the voicing exercise that I use from time to time uh, when my tongue is not feeling great, I'm feeling like I'm losing a little bit of control, this is what I come back to. So um, at first it's easier to play this without any metronome or any sense of rhythm, just getting the notes to speak, but eventually if you want to develop greater control you can put the metronome. Uh, start slow like 30 40 go up to 60 if you're brave go up to like 80 100 120 but it, it gets quite difficult so uh, this these exercises are kind of separated by double bar lines here so here there's a double bar line that's so that's one exercise this is another exercise well I guess this separated by re repeats but you get the idea so uh, the first first couple exercises are what we just did, um, kind of with the low E fingering and just learning to hit different partials and with control. etc you get the idea so that's kind of the first couple first three exercises it goes quite high um, obviously it goes without speaking if it's not a note you can hit normally with regular fingerings it, it's not probably not a note that you can hit by just doing your voicing um, here's the next part is doing the same thing but with a shorter tube length so we're using the fingering for C and then here an even shorter tube with G and then G it gets a little more difficult to go higher with the shorter tubes so uh, it's good to practice short tube kind of a middle length ish tube and a long tube they all have their own challenges. And then finally, there's this just one exercise that kind of puts it all together. 
where we're going uh, adding fingers and we're playing both the lower and higher register. <laughs> deal with undertones as well. Uh, the undertones, sometimes when you have a beginner student, think back to your beginning days, when, you, when, when you're when you playing that C, B, A for the first time, you're, you're getting a little bit of a grunt, right? So that's kind of what we mean by undertone, is that grunt. Um, it's also very important to be able to control these as many multiphonics actually use undertones to achieve one of the two notes. So uh, this is here, bar 71. When you get to the G, it, it, the sound when you play the lower note can be a little bit airy. Uh, it may or may not even want to speak. So in order to do that, um, the part of tongue I'm using is kind of right in that line, that, that, that area between the back of my tongue and the middle of my tongue. So right where it starts, where, where I think um, is touching the tongue is touching my back molars at the top that part comes down a little bit and then the part right behind the part that's touching my molars actually goes up a little bit uh, to and that and then that that's the same motion for every single note but it just becomes a greater motion so the part behind the top the part that's touching my top molars gets raised higher and higher the lower I go on the clarinet and the part right in front of the part that is touching my molar goes lower and lower in order to hit all those undertones so the next couple exercises deal with that and then we get to controlling pitch. So like I said, the middle part of your tongue controls the pitch and it's important to be able to control it with precision. Precision, not just uh, doing, if you're doing a scoop, you wanna be able to do a scoop from a note that you want to rather than just any old note. So from here, we have some exercises to help you develop control over that. So this is just practicing bending the pitch by a semitone. Uh, as you can tell, it's even I'm not able to do it very accurately all the time. Uh, so I also haven't done this exercises in a, these exercises in a couple weeks. So it, it is a very challenging exercise that it's gonna take a while. And then here, we have the same thing, but we're always going bending from a C. Once you get to G or F, you, you, you might be, if you can get that far, great. 
but and then once you get that far a lot of times you're gonna start getting a little bit of a multiphonic with the lower note that's completely normal um, just try and, and eliminate the lower note that is speaking through just more practice um, and eventually you'll be able to do it and this exercise goes down to a D and a C sharp or D flat but that, that is quite difficult and I would say when you get down to that low it also is dependent on your equipment uh, so if you're having a bad read day you're probably not getting those notes up um, now this actually has a practical use so our everyone's favorite gliss a lot of times uh, we're kind of taught to do it with fingers but once you get control over your voicing you can do a much smoother gliss by just using uh, your voicing at least over the second half of the gliss especially above a G you can really use your voicing to control the speed of the gliss um, that way if the conductor wants to mess with you uh, you're ready for that so uh, the full opening of that So you can see you can really really control how fast and how slow that gliss is if you have control over voicing um, obviously you would never do that do it well I wouldn't say never but you, you more more likely than not you're not doing it that slow uh, in a performance but just to show some of the possibilities with uh, voicing so one one more time the voicing for controlling pitch is is done with the middle part of the tongue and we're just moving that part up and down um, so yeah that's that and then next we have this kind of exercise where um, I'm, I'm controlling the pitch even though the fingerings are moving up so I have to it this helps me with uh, anticipating voicing so anticipate what the voicing is going to be when I play the same note with all these fingerings Etc. Etc. Um, as you can tell, some of them I'm getting a multiphonic uh, because it, it, it does take a lot of anticipation and a little bit of practice. So uh, don't be discouraged if this is very difficult because it should be. And then finally, we put everything together by doing uh, an exercise where we're going between under and over tones. <laughs> etc etc obviously the lower you go the more difficult it is going to be so that's kind of the voicing exercise I use to uh, help me either through a slump sorry wrong there we go so that's kind of the the, the exercise I, I put myself through every time I'm thinking oh my tongue is not quite working the way I want it to be or I want to uh, I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm having as much flexibility as uh, I should. These are great exercises for me to regain control over my voicing and 
just develop some extra range and consistency over using the extra range of tongue motion um, yeah so this has been more of a how to hopefully how to video than uh, an informational one uh, I hope you guys go out and try this um, once again the exercise can be found on my website link down below and yeah, I hope you have fun mixing, making some noises. I'll see you next week.